Welcome to Paperback Warrior Podcast. This is Eric, co-host and blogger. I am going to be talking about a recent shopping trip I made to my canopy, Florida. I uh, did a shopping trip there with my family and I'm going to talk about the books that I bought, some of the video and photographs that I took of the place. Just a wonderful, wonderful um, area. My canopy, Florida, as you can see, is right in the center of the state. A lot of people talk about the East Coast and the West Coast of Florida, but uh, right here south of Gainesville is the little town of my canopy and just a gorgeous little town. It's really just a stoplight. Um, it's got a Cuban cafe, it has a coffee shop and a lot of uh, little shops and antique stores. It's a liberal arts community, um, but it's a really neat little place and its claim to fame is that uh, the movie Doc Hollywood uh, was filmed here. Uh, if you can recall the movie, uh, it was Grady, it was the town of Grady, um, but it was filmed in my canopy uh, in the movie Doc Hollywood plays a, a surgeon or, or big city doctor that crashes his fast, fancy sports car into the judge's fence and has to uh, do time in the town as the doctor to pay for the fence. Uh, great movie and a lot of the buildings I recognized from the movie are, are still there, still standing. I've been converted into various things, but uh, just a neat little town um, with a lot of history uh, regarding the movie. And there's some movie memorabilia there as well. Uh, as you get further into uh, town, it's sort of like a little hill you go up. And on top of the hill is the Antique City Mall. It's kind of like a big warehouse um, that's just filmed, filled with little, uh, little booths uh, ran by, you know, I guess the, 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 the people that live in the town. A lot of different things, you know, porcelain dolls and knives, coins, the normal stuff that you find in uh, in antique malls. But thankfully, uh, they had books. And when we talk about books in antique stores, we're normally talking about, uh, you know, Betty Crocker <laughs> cookbooks, uh, Better Homes and Gardens, uh, How to Garden, How to Grow Flowers, and things like that. Um, but thankfully, this uh, this actually had some books. When I walked in, I found some Star Trek paperbacks, which is kind of unusual to find paperbacks um, at a place like this. So I was really ecstatic about that. And then uh, as I got further into the mall itself, I saw a large uh, bookstore. Had like a lot of nonfiction books, um, some hardcovers, uh, just things that I normally wouldn't be that drawn to. Uh, but it looked like it had some paperbacks sprinkled in as well. And my wife, uh, she went around the corner um, and she's like, you know, whoa, you need to come around here and check this out. Uh, so I walk around the corner and just loads of vintage paperbacks. You can always tell, you know, just looking at the spines, they're shorter, uh, yellow spines and, and blue pages or red pages, you know, kind of looking uh, from the top down, you can see those colored pages. So a lot of vintage paperbacks were in there. Um, I'm going to talk about the books that I bought, I did a pretty good job of cleaning out <laughs> the vintage paperbacks. But man, there were a lot of magazines there and comics, um, just old, old um, uh, toys, movie memorabilia, uh, just nerd playland. And uh, I was really excited to find um, a lot of these books. I've never seen them out in the wild before. And I've got some videos and some uh, some photos as well. Hey, when you run out of money, you, all you got left is pictures, right? So <laughs> I made sure to take a lot of pictures and a lot of video. So we'll get we'll get into it. Here's a box of astounding science fiction magazines or, or digest. They're all bagged and boarded, and you can see it's got a lot of them. They're all in really really uh, good condition. Just great covers great stories just a great collection of those it's, um, I really like these a lot and then below this it's kind of on a table below it is this basket of graphic audio CDs As you can see here it's William W Johnstone's uh, Mountain Man series and I think maybe another series is in there too um, and then at the end it looks like it's some sort of science fiction I'm not familiar with that particular title but really good collection of those graphic audios you don't see them very often anymore Got a great collection of those old uh, Dell and Gold Key comics. Here you see it's uh, Zane Gray's Stories of the West, number 33. I think that was 1956. A cover artist, I believe, is Morris Galoob. Uh, but those are really, really cool. Uh, here you've got Kit Carson and the Wild Frontier by Ralph Moody. 
This is on uh, Landmark Books, which I think was owned by Random House or or maybe became Random House. I'm not really sure, but it's in decent condition. It's just really old. Here you've got Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, uh, Gold Key, uh, number six, 1966. This is uh, 1965, I think. It's the adaptation of uh, the Frank Sinatra film uh, comic book. Here's some more graphic audio uh, that I showed in the video earlier, just on a different shelf. And these are Tom Swift uh, hardbacks. My dad loved Tom Swift. He's got a couple of them here in pretty good condition. And then this is, uh, looks like Die Monster Die from the movie. Uh, I think it's another uh, comic book adaptation of the movie. 1966 Dell. Here you've got uh, another Gold Key comic for uh, the television show I Spy. This is really neat. Uh, three issues adapted from the Dune movie from 1985, not the new one. This was a Marvel series. I thought these were uh, these were pretty neat. These are 1960-ish, uh, uh, 1960s uh, hardcovers from Macmillan, uh, Ian Fleming's James Bond series. They were really cool. Uh, I think they're a book club of some sort, but they're in really bad shape, obviously, as you can see. But just a really cool collection. I'm not sure how much he was. they were asking for it. Uh, this is really highly collectible, the, the big little books. A lot of people really love those things. I see them every now and then. This one is from the Invaders TV show, uh, 1967. And I think this was uh, big little book number 12 um, for that publisher. And here's some more uh, hardcovers that I found. And you can see here there's a couple westerns with Gene Autry's name on the on the cover. And there's some Hardy Boys in there as well. And this last book is uh, Zane Gray's The Last Trail, which is part of the Border Trilogy. It's a really early edition of the book. Uh, it's in really good shape. Great cover art. I almost bought this, but I don't really collect hardback books, but cover was so so good on this and it's it's such a great uh, great series great author okay we're moving over here to look at all the books that i was able to pick up at the antique city mall in uh, my canopy florida i'm first going to start with sort of my wallpaper over here as you can see i've got uh, several new releases from stark house press that are out uh, this month are coming out uh, very soon, uh, so I <laughs> figured I'd do a little Stark Starkhouse Press uh, shilling here uh, by showing those. But let me show, show you uh, some of these westerns first. Um, they had a lot of westerns, so I'm going to start with these. Pull these up. Okay, aren't these gorgeous? So we've got Deadline. And this one, Riders of the Night by Eugene Cunningham. Uh, these are uh, are digest sized uh, westerns by Hillman. Um, this was, I guess, Hillman would be considered an early, early publishing house. In fact, I think they were the one of the first publishers to uh, to actually sell paperbacks in the magazine racks because that's where people were typically buying the pulps and things like that. And paperback originals was was kind of a new thing. Um, but from what I understand, this one. Um, is by uh, W.C. Tuttle, and it was originally, let's go and move this over here, it was originally uh, published in uh, the October 20th, 1924 issue of Adventure. Uh, it was later published in England in 1927. Uh, this version from Hillman is 1941, and um, it's part of uh, this author's Hash Knife Hartley, uh, and Sleepy Stevens <laughs> series. Uh, basically, the, the premise is that Hashknife and his partner Sleepy are, are like wandering cowboys, and they turn into sort of like pseudo-detectives on the range. Um, there's a lot of these uh, Hashknife and uh, Sleepy uh, installments to the series, both in the pulps and then on the uh, paperback reprints. Um, but according to research, this one in particular is not abridged. A lot of times Hillman would do abridged versions of these stories um, and put them in paperbacks 
sort of abbreviated, but this one is uh, it's, it's in its entirety. And as you can see, um, it's in really, really good shape. Um, just, I was so pleased to see it, and um, I've never seen one of these out in the wild, so I was really happy about it. The other one here, by Eugene Cunningham, uh, also a Hillman Western. Uh, with this one, I believe 1932, so really, really old. Um, this was Eugene Cunningham's first, uh, or I'm sorry, it's his second published novel. Um, fairly prolific uh, Western writer. Again, as you can see, drop it, um, fairly good condition, pretty crisp corners. And um, when I got it, it was bagged. So someone was really taking care of these, uh, taking care of these books. Uh, so just great shape. Uh, next on the, uh, the Westerns, let's go over here to Santa Fe Passage. Uh, Santa Fe Passage, Pocket Books, 1957. Uh, author Clay Fisher, it was really Henry Wilson Allen. Uh, he wrote a ton of westerns and a lot were adapted to film, including this one. Uh, it originally started out as a novelette in Esquire magazine, April 1952, and then later became a movie in 1955. As you can see, it's in really good shape as well. Uh, it's one of those uh, smaller, you know, smaller books, you know, obviously pocketbook, but smaller than a normal uh, size paperback. So I can always spot these in the stores really easy. Uh, next, it's a beautiful one, Wild Bunch. This is Bantam 1949. Uh, cover, just great cover by Norman Saunders. As you can see, it's, um, it's in pretty good shape as well. And not much uh, coming apart here. Crisp pages, nothing missing. And it's got a little bit of writing inside, but that's normal for a pencil, uh, pencil marks in here. But as you can see, just gorgeous book. Next is Trigger Trails. Uh, this is a century publication, uh, number 125, um, 1950. And originally was uh, published as a hardcover in 1946 as Hair Trigger Hombre. Hair Trigger Ombre, but um, this was a uh, another author that was a heavy, heavy contributor to the pulps. And as you can see, this one's in fairly good shape. Um, just really happy to find it. Uh, it's beautiful Western. Next, High Mesa. High Mesa, 1953, popular library. Uh, Tex, Tex Grady was actually author Jack Webb. Some of you may remember Jack Webb as writing a lot of crime fiction. Uh, he wrote a number of crime fiction novels in the 50s and 60s. Uh, this one, uh, Pocket, uh, I'm sorry, Popular Library number 493. Uh, some great, great artwork there. And this one's in really fantastic condition as well. It was not bagged. It's got a little bit of a, a corner missing right there, but otherwise it's in really good shape. Really happy to find this one. Uh, next is Death Rides the Night. Uh, Death Rides the Night. This is a pocket book, June 1952. Uh, Peter Field, of course, was a house name. My guess is that this one was uh, written by Davis Dresser, uh, who later created the uh, Mike Sheen detective series, wildly popular, under the pseudonym Brett Holiday or Holiday. Uh, this is a Powder Valley Western, starring the uh, Colorado rancher Pat Stevens, and. Um, it's in good shape. I've never read a Powder Valley Western. Um, reading James Reasoner's excellent blog. Uh, I know he's been reading these for decades. I think this was a uh, one that he kind of a series that he fell in love with when he was a child or teen. Uh, but I've got a number of these books, but uh, this is one of the better ones in, in condition wise. But really happy to find it. Uh, next is Renegade Canyon. This is Dell number 559, February 1957. Uh, Peter Dawson was Jonathan Glidden. And the Glidden name may be familiar to uh, Western fans. Uh, Jonathan Glidden uh, is the brother of Frederick Glidden, who was popular author Luke Short. I'm sure you've probably seen Luke Short Westerns out there. Uh, but uh, Frederick Glidden was the actual name behind Luke Short, and this is his brother, who actually had a, a fairly prolific career, uh, even though we don't really hear much about him. But uh, great book, uh, great condition, 
Um, again, just really happy to find it. Next is an Ace Double. I was hoping to find one of these. I don't have a lot of Ace Double Westerns. This one, uh, 1964 uh, F-284 for those keeping track at home. Uh, cover by Gerald McConnell. Uh, we have The Homesteader by Ben Smith. And Border Passage by Lynn Searles. And go over here to some of the later ones. Not as, not as early. E.E. Uh, e. Halloran, another uh, popular Western writer. Spanish Ridge. And I swear that I've seen this, uh, this cover on another paperback Western that I have. Or maybe even two or three of them. Uh, this is February 1970. Uh, Ballantine. And the cover was by... Uh, Gina DeKille, uh, De uh, I've seen this cover, like I said, on some other Westerns. So this was originally uh, published in 1957, and um, again, this was just a really prolific uh, Western author, but really, really glad to have this one. Don't have any of this author's work, so I was really happy to get it. And uh, so we're going to go over here to Jack April. Uh, Jack April, Feud at Five Rivers, and again, this cover has been recycled numerous times. Uh, this one I've seen, I think, most recently uh, came across a Buckhannon book in my collection. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is a Buckhannon paperback cover. Uh, this book itself, uh, Pyramid 1962, uh, original publication in 1957. And surprisingly, this was Jack April's only Western. Um, this was it. This is all he wrote. And uh, Lee Goldberg, if you're watching at home, this might be a one to pick up for Cutting Edge, uh, simply because this is a, a one and done. So uh, really glad to find it. And Ernest Haycox, uh, we talked about him earlier, I think, uh, but this was another one, uh, Outer Gulch. And I was recently uh, visiting with Stephen Mertz uh, out in Arizona, and he had uh, some wonderful things to say about Ernest Haycox. I've never read one of his Westerns, but um, he really enjoys it. This one's kind of worse for wear. I've got a number of uh, the Southers Westerns, but this one's in pretty bad shape. And then this one, we just, I can't remember what episode, but we just did a podcast episode a few months back on author Philip Ketchum. I don't ever see his Westerns out in the wild, so I was just tickled to death to get this one. Again, it's a, um, a Hillman publication, just like the two digest size Westerns we looked at earlier. Uh, but this is Hillman. As you can see, it's just in great, great shape. And I think this one, I actually started reading this the other day, but then got uh, sidetracked. Uh, this one is, let's see, uh, 1960. So great, great Western writer. So now we're going to move to non-Westerns, get into a little bit of sci-fi and some crime fiction. So let's, as you can see, I've got... <laughs> Got them stacked up here, so let me move them over. So the first one I'm going to talk about is, well, actually I'll backtrack and say that outside of the Antique City Mall, there was another antique store that I went into that had a full collection of Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan novels in early, early edition hardcovers. Um, no cover art. These were, I think, were school library editions in perfect condition. And uh, the guy wanted... I think $150 for the whole set of uh, 15, but I just, I don't collect hardbacks and I don't have anywhere to put those, but I was tempted to get them and maybe offer like, you know, 75 or $80, but I didn't take a chance. But speaking of Edgar Rice Burroughs, pick this up. This is Ace from 1944. Um, this is number six in uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, uh, Pelucadar uh, series. And as you can see, Beautiful cover, uh, Frank Frazetta, uh, just wonderful. And a lot of people, when they talk about Frank Frazetta, they're talking about the cover, but you got to remember that he also did some of the insert art too. Not as not as much talked about, but this is this is Frazetta as well. But it's in pretty decent shape. I've got a number of these uh, Ace Edition uh, books from uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, so don't didn't have this one, so I was really glad to get it. And then we've got another Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan of the Apes. I've got this already in a complete set of the uh, Ballantine books. But this is a later edition by Ballantine, and this was November 1976. And I bought it for the awesome Neil Adams cover. Just amazing cover. I love it. So just had to have it. 
And we're going to move into crime fiction because that's sort of the bread and butter. This is a Ron Lesser cover. This is 1965. Uh, Perma Books, uh, or I should say Dell, um, Dell version, and this was a second printing, uh, 1962. Uh, this is not part of the uh, police procedural series uh, that Ed McBain is closely uh, related to or familiar with. Uh, some of those fans love his police procedural books, but this one is not a uh, part of that. I, I can't even think of the name of it. I'm so out of it 80 uh, 81st precinct i think is what it was but this is not part of that next uh is it con man this is the one that's perma books uh, 87th precinct my fault i was thinking 81st but this one not in good shape it's got some writing on it tattered spine and i think i have this as another edition cool cover though so i, re I really like it dragon murder case is next dragon murder case this was first published in 1934 this is the april 1949 paperback version uh, if you're familiar with this author uh, it was a uh, I'm trying to think of the series it's uh i think it's philo a uh, philo vance series of uh, amateur detective novels this was number seven in the series and this was made into a film in 1934 as you can see, it's in you know, really good condition. I was really happy to find it, and uh, no missing pages. Just, just a gorgeous book. And this one I was really, really excited about. Look at that cover. That's amazing. Uh, so this was a, originally a hardback by Harper, and this is the first paperback edition from 1952. Uh, this is Avon number 623. And... Uh, this one has some history behind it because it was the very first novel that won um, uh, an Edgar Award, an inaugural Edgar Award. It's an Australian author, really name, uh, real name is Geraldine Halls. And as good as this cover is by uh, Raymond Johnson, who did this, there's a better version out there by, uh, with a cover by Ron Lesser. That's, that's just as good, if not better. And I'm really looking forward to reading this. I hear it's fantastic. And this one's in really good shape. I love it. Next, Death for Mr. Big. This isn't James Bond, <laughs> even though there's Mr. Big and James Bond. This is Death for Mr. Big. John Gonzalez was actually Robert Terrell, or Terrell, uh, who also authored books as Robert Kyle and penned uh, Mike Shane books as Brett Halliday after Dresser kind of left the series and pursued other things. Uh, you can listen to podcast episode number 84. We did a feature on this particular author. And um, I believe Tom uh, reviewed another one of uh, the John Gonzalez penned books, uh, End of a JD. This is a uh, Fawcett Gold Medal, 1951, I believe. Uh, so it's a really cool cover and everything. Hope to read it. It's another author we've discussed on the show and uh, podcast episode 59. Uh, we did a feature on William P. McGivern. Uh, McGivern um, Pocket Books number 100. Uh, I'm sorry, Pocket Books 1030, October 1954. We've reviewed this book on the blog as well. So you can go out to paperbackwarrior.com and read several William McGivern's uh, reviews out there. This one is. That I'm bringing up next, I was ecstatic to find. Look at that. I, and I'm not sure, but I think this was maybe James Reisner's first novel. I'm, I'm not sure. I'll have to ask him. Uh, Manor Books, Texas Wind, 1980. And I've heard this is really, really good. It's a private eye uh, story. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to ask, but I was thinking about sending this to, uh, to James Reasoner to see if he could autograph it for me. Um, I talk with James Reasoner occasionally on Facebook, and he's a fan of the Paperback Warrior blog, and he listens to the podcast, and I read his stuff. So I was going to get him to autograph it for me, but it looks like he already did it. So, James, if you're watching this, hopefully that's your, your autograph, or someone's forging it. But really happy to find that it's in great condition. Can't wait to read it. Great cover art. 
Just really excited about it. Lady in the Morgue. This is an old one. Uh, seventh printing of this book, uh, 1945, originally produced uh, or published in 1936. This is part of the Bill Crane detective series. Uh, this was a, uh, I guess, a Hollywood writer. Uh, he was a World War II veteran, and I think he later went on to join the Perry Mason staff um, for television work. So, Lady in the Morgue, uh, pretty good shape. Got a little, a little messed up corner there, but. I'm going to bag it and uh, keep it nice and crisp. Hopefully read it at some point someday. Not in a big hurry to read that one. Death at the Bar. Don't know how to pronounce the author's name. Uh, this is Pocket, 1945. Um, this was a New Zealand mystery writer. And this writer had a series of books starring Inspector Roderick Allen. And Dorothy B. Hughes, uh, a really popular mystery writer, uh, called this writer a writer's writer. Um, so, looks good. Um, not really read any anything by this author. So, um, I think, you know, just now thinking about it, I think with this one, I was reading a little bit about the series, and I think it's sort of like... Um, Matt Scudder series by Lawrence Block where the character ages and also, you know, progresses or changes throughout the series. I think Inspector Allen rises in the ranks throughout each book. So I think it sort of progresses into his career. So early books sort of new and then later in the series he's becoming like, you know, further up in the ranks. Uh, so I'm kind of interested in, to try that at some point. Stolen Woman, another author that we've talked about here on the uh, on the show. This was actually Bob Wade and Bill Miller, uh, thus the name Wade Miller. They collaborated on a number of uh, paperback originals, mostly through Fawcett Gold Medal. This one, uh, Fawcett 1950. If you want to learn more about this uh, duo, you can go to episode number 39 of the Paperback Warrior podcast. We've got a whole feature on this author and their work. Next, it's probably one that you may have heard about or read about, or read, The High Window. Popular, popular uh, author Raymond Chandler. This, of course, is uh, starring Philip Marlowe. This was the third Philip Marlowe installment. First printing was Pocket, 1945, uh, or this one is anyway. Originally published in 1942. Uh, Philip Marlowe, of course, was a uh, L.A. detective and really popular. I've got a number of these uh, these books. Uh, I you know I can't I can't really say that I'm all that uh, enthusiastic about reading them. Uh, French detective uh, Simonon. I can't remember the first name, but uh, this one is Bantam, uh, 1959. Pretty good shape. And then these other ones I'm going to show you. Just I don't really know much about them. And they're just kind of later, later books. I'm not sure who that is. Maybe someone watching at home will know what that is. Uh, so that I'll lay it right here. That's not in very good shape. And then this one, Charles Williford. That's an author that uh, we've reviewed on the blog, talked about on the show. It's one of his later books. As you can see, it's really thick. Back when they wanted paperbacks to be a lot thicker than 200 pages. Uh, not sure if this is any good or not, but uh, apparently it was turned into a film. Carter Dixon. And four more. I think this is kind of like a comedy. Popular, I'm very older. This, I think, is a, more of a literary thing than mystery. Two more. Never read an Eric Ambler book. Popular spy fiction author. And last, I Married a Dead Man. Later, a reprinting of a Cornell Woolworth crime fiction novel. So there you have it. All the videos, photos, and the haul of what I did in McCanopy, Florida. 
be sure to follow if you're not on YouTube. Uh, you can follow um, and also follow on Facebook and again, paperbackwarrior.com. And thanks for watching.